Welcome to the channel folks, my name is Cole if you're new and today I want to take a deeper dive into dual pulse MIG welding. If you don't know what dual pulse MIG welding or even single pulse MIG welding is, that's alright. I'm going to start from the basics, explain things along the way and demonstrate what this little machine can do. In today's video, we're going to be using the Firstus DP200. Full disclosure, Yes Welder did provide me with this machine. I've been using it for a little while now. We have a previous video of doing a full review of the features. I'll leave that link in the description below. It was pretty popular. But I've had a lot of requests to explain more about the dual pulse features of this machine. So I want to dive into that today. Another thing I want to test out while we're at it is the optional spool gun they sent me. Now, why do you need a spool gun when you can put a Teflon liner in the regular gun and feed aluminum through a typical setup? Well, there's some other advantages. I'll cover that once we get there. And we're mainly an aluminum shop, so today we're going to be doing all this with 1 8 aluminum. Really, the concepts and things that I'm going to be talking about all apply to steel. The settings are just a little different and obviously a different filler metal. So one of the best features about this machine is it not only MIG welds steel, but it also MIG welds aluminum without costing you a fortune. Typical MIG welding aluminum setups can be very expensive because they use a push-pull gun setup where it pushes wire at the machine and pulls at the gun and those are not cheap at all. Now there is an advantage to that so that you can run smaller wire and really long lead lengths and it doesn't matter. In a typical MIG setup where it only has drive rollers in the machine, Pushing aluminum wire is very difficult because it's so soft. It likes to birdcage up in the machine, birdcage up in your liner, and it, it just has a lot of difficulties. But with this machine, a fairly short lead length it, and a Teflon liner installed, it can push 035 wire and up with very little issue. Now, the only thing I've noticed is that you do have to try and maintain a fairly straight lead. If you get too many kinks in it, you just wind up running into those issues I was talking about. So another option to try and eliminate some of those issues is to run a spool gun. Now, downside is they're a bit heavier. You can only run one pound spools, but by having the aluminum filler metal right here, it doesn't have to push very far and you can run longer lead lengths and you sort of eliminate all that issue with dealing with the soft filler metal. So you can get into awkward positions. The machine doesn't have to be right beside you. I have not used this yet. I wanted to try it out, so they sent it to me and I'm very curious to run some beads with it today. So one of the things I really do love about this machine, and if you wanna see a deeper dive, please watch that other video, but it has so many preset settings. So you can change your filler metal to whatever you wanna run. We're gonna be using 4043. Um, you can change your gas, you can select your wire size, and then when you select your material thickness, it automatically updates the settings that should be closest to what you require. You can select your MIG gun, a spool gun, check gas, turn pulse on and off, and then you can even get into some advanced settings like changing your inductance, burn back time, post flows, pre flows, all that kind of stuff. We'll do a quick little review of that along the way. So I don't really plan on doing a full welding tutorial video. I do really just want to cover the aspects of dual pulse MIG welding, but let's just start at the basics, make sure everyone's up to speed. So you have different types of transfer mode in MIG welding. You have short circuit transfer, which is definitely the most common out there. And that's where the filler metal coming out of your MIG gun touches your base metal, arcs out, burns back, hits again, and it just keeps repeating that process. Um, as I say, it's, it's the most common out there. It can create a lot of spatter. Um, there's a risk of cold joints when welding steel with it. Um, and it's just, it's good, it's just not the best out there. So that's where a machine like this comes in. With single and dual pulse, you're getting out of the short circuit transfer and you're going into a spray transfer. Now the difference there is your filler metal establishes a constant arc between the filler metal and the base material and the pulsing aspect snips off, so to speak, the molten part of this filler metal and the arc carries that across. That has the result of reduced spatter and also a much hotter weld that has a lot more penetration. So then the other aspect of this is dual pulse. And what dual pulse is, is taking that single pulse high frequency and establishing it on a larger waveform. 
where the current and voltage is increased and decreased and increased and decreased. And we can play with those settings in the machine. The purpose of that is to allow you to get a nice high penetration weld with less overall heat input into the base metal. And there's a lot of times where that's important. The other aspect is it gives you a prettier weld, a nicer appearance, kind of the stack of dimes look, if that's what you're going for. All right, well, that's enough talking for me. I'm gonna get some coupons cut up and I think it'll all start to make a little more sense as we get welding. So if you want the best results with aluminum, I highly recommend you do your edge cleaning with a file. A flap disc and a grinder, I know they're a lot faster and sometimes I do it too, but that will embed impurities into the metal and leave to a contaminated, uh, sootier weld and it can just fight you down the road. So best results, use a file, wire brush, and then acetone wipe. The reason we do the wire brushing is because we're removing that aluminum oxide layer. And the reason that's troublesome is because regular aluminum, I think melts around 12, 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the oxide is into the 2000s. So by eliminating that oxide, it lets all the filler metals melt together a little bit better. And then we give them an acetone wipe. Remove any grease or oils. So today on this machine, we're running 4043035 -03 wire. We can select the thickness. We're doing 1 8 inch coupons. That reduces our wire feed, which is our amperage. And then we have some features here where we can play with the volts. And also inductance. So just for some quick information, your wire feed speed is controlling your current, your voltage setback here, you are really increasing or decreasing the preset volts that the, the program in this machine has. So it's just how much you're taking away or adding to the voltage. And then that inductance setting changes the characteristics of the arc. It can narrow the bead up with a high inductance or with a low inductance, widen that band out and make the puddle a little more fluid. And those are all settings you find in your pulse mode. So right now we're on single pulse. I wanna do three coupons here right now. No pulse, which will just be a straight DC. We'll turn on pulse, just single pulse, and then we'll move on to dual pulse. And I think it's when we do some dual pulse welding, it'll all make sense. It's not really that complicated, but let's get welding. Let's start welding at the beginning. We're gonna weld 035 4043 aluminum, no pulse. Okay, let's move on to single pulse. So I wanna take a pause here for a second. You can obviously hear that single pulse, the difference, um, that buzzing sound of the higher frequency pulsing versus just the straight DC. And both are very nice welds. The no pulse went in very smooth. It was a little harder to get the puddle formed, but once you formed it, it laid in there really nice. The single pulse, that buzzing noise, I noticed that there was a bit of spatter on the weld. Um, however, it established a puddle a little easier and it was a little, little better to flow along. That just reminds me to mention, I'm just using 
the machine settings right now. There are so many little tweaks and things you can do. Um, I'm not trying to get rid of that little spatter, although I do think with a little bit of tweaking of the settings, we could probably get rid of that. Just gonna use the machine settings to keep this simple, and then I wanna get focusing a little bit more on dual pulse, which is what we're gonna do right now. So let's start some dual pulse welding. So it's pretty easy to change these settings. We go to pulse, we could turn single pulse on, which we were just doing, and then we can go to dual pulse and turn that on. And this diagram, I think, explains what I was trying to say earlier, where we have a high frequency pulsing on a larger waveform. One hertz, it's doing one cycle a second, and we can play with the magnitudes and the time durations and then see what the resulting welds look like. Well, I got some settings dialed in on that dual pulse and what I had to do was increase the heat on the low part of the waveform. It would step down to 50% the normal current. I increased that to 60% because I felt on the low part of the cycle, it really wasn't wetting in enough. And uh, I got it pretty dialed. These starts are always kind of tough and cold and that is really just the reality of uh, aluminum MIG welding. But there we go. We have three different types of aluminum MIG welding. Um, to be honest, the first one, no pulse, is really my favorite looking of the bunch here right now. Um, I have done a lot more of that. The single pulse, it felt more controllable. So that was a huge plus. Um, I felt like the puddle established a little better. Um, you just had a little bit more control over the puddle. Now it did result in some spatter as I've probably mentioned many times, I think I can dial that in and probably reduce that, um, or it may have just been related to gun angle. We'll see, a little bit more practice will show. And then my least experience is on dual pulse. And I think just watching it and hearing it, you really get the idea. It's putting in less overall current than single pulse, and this type of bead really shines on like an outside corner joint or where you're at risk of melting through on material. And with a little more practice, you can probably really make that look like a TIG weld. Some of the other settings that you can play with on dual pulse is changing your frequency. So lowering your frequency down will give you a little more time at hot, a little more time at cold, a little more time at hot, or you could increase that frequency and get it cycling a lot faster. It's really gonna depend on the project you're working on, playing with those base levels, um, the inductance. There is a lot of settings to dial in and it really just takes practice. This is one of those things, you just gotta sit down. I have a ton of test coupons that I've been playing around with and you gotta learn it. The last thing I wanna test out is the new accessory they sent me and it's that spool gun. I'm gonna get that spool gun set up. It's very easy. It's just like changing out a regular gun. Then let's play around with the same three welds with the spool gun and see if there's any difference versus a regular torch. Well, with that changed over, we're gonna test out the spool gun. And you might ask the question, why bother with the spool gun? Uh, clearly, we're getting some pretty good welds with a regular MIG gun and a Teflon liner installed. Well, we were in a perfect scenario. I could have the lead perfectly flat in a nice arc and it could successfully push wire that far. Welding is rarely in a perfect scenario. A lot of times you're upside down in weird places. Um, I think you could probably even rig something up to extend the wires here and uh, have the machine a lot farther away from where you're working. That actually might be a neat idea for Yes Welder is to make an extension kit so the actual welder can be 20 feet away from where you're welding. So if you're building a boat or something where you're crawled in, you really don't have to worry about the gun position. This eliminates the kinking or issues that come with only pushing aluminum wire. And the ultimate way is using a push-pull gun, but those are very expensive, and even for someone who works with aluminum quite a bit, that's still out of reach for me at the moment. Here's a little closer view of that spool gun. A few things that I noticed from the ones I'm used to using is 
it actually has a pretty nice little easy open lid. Some of the other ones have thumb screws and uh, when you're going through rolls, if you're doing a lot of welding, a one pound roll doesn't last that long. So you're changing them fairly frequently. Another nice feature over ones I've used is where the drive rollers and everything are, it's actually really easy to access because even with the spool gun, if you burn back in your tip a little far, uh, you bird cage up in here and you got to clean it out from time to time. So let's load some wire in and test it out. Ultimately, it should weld very similar to what we were just doing, but let's see if all of those settings and everything apply to the spool gun. O three five, perfect. O three five U roller. Oh, there's the thumb screw. Let's tell this thing it has a spool gun attached. There we go. First thing to note about the spool gun were the presets on the machine I felt were too high. It ran me through a couple of tips. Um, it just burnt back, melted the tip, and I used up the couple extra spares they gave me. Thankfully, the tips in this spool gun match the tips for the regular MIG gun. Um, so that was pretty convenient because I have a good stockpile of those. So I threw a new tip in, dialed back their settings a bit, and laid in the no pulse weld. Honestly, that is a really nice weld, no spatter. Um, I, I really can't complain with that. I, I really like it. Then the next weld there, the single pulse, uh, also laid in pretty good. A better puddle control I found, but I did get some spatter and adding some voltage seemed to reduce it, but not eliminate it completely. And the third one, the dual pulse, um, it's an interesting one with that voltage and current dropping off significantly uh, puddle control is not what you're used to and get keeping the rhythm with the pulsing um, is something I'm just not all that used to but with a little bit of practice I think you could stack it up uh, make it really pretty it's definitely hot um, it's hard to say if there's less heat I'm gonna need more experience with doing some uh, joints that are very susceptible to heat input to truly find out. But overall, the spool gun with this machine is really nice. Um, well, there we go. There was some dual pulse MIG welding on aluminum with the GP200. And again, a lot of these settings, um, the factory settings are, are a good starting point. And depending on your specific job, you need to learn to dial them in. That really just comes with the territory. So spending a little bit of time, I went through quite a variety of billets, some tips but I found the settings that I liked and I think we can further tweak. That is the beauty of this machine. You can really tweak things, dial it in, and uh, all of a sudden you're laying down really, really nice welds. Overall, I'm very happy with this machine. Um, I think it brings new opportunities to a home shop. And if you only have to buy one machine, this can do a lot of things for you. So I hope you enjoyed that little deep dive. And if you're curious what this is, we've got a whole playlist on it. It's our custom Snowcat build. Um, check it out. There is a ton of aluminum welding in there. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.